Hello, you lovely ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Dangs, uh, and today I welcome you guys uh, back to another Advanced Wars replay commentary. Today we're going to take a look at a match which is neither educational nor particularly inspirational. I don't have a deeper meaning I wish to convey with this replay, no lessons that I wish to impart on you, and uh, we are not watching a match between the two best players in the world. This is just a very fun game. And it's pure chaos. Star Flash sent me this replay. It was like, you should check this out if you want to cast a fun replay. And I was like, yeah, I'll check it out. And I did. And it looked like a lot of fun. So I'm going to show it on the channel. Now, I recognize one of the players in this uh, matchup in Floofy. You may remember Floofy. I covered one of his uh, games in the Egg Cup. Uh, I do believe it was, yeah, it was round eight. It was the Drake Mirror matchup in the weird snow-based map. And I know that Floofy is a content creator, so I'll throw a link to his channel in the video description since I'm showing one of his games. I don't know if he's analyzed it himself, but he does the occasional Advanced Wars replay commentary. Um, so I said that this wasn't the match between the two best players in the world, but I don't want to sell these two players short either. Uh, Floofy is a pretty strong player in his own right. He's been rising through the ranks pretty quickly as of late. He's almost 1300 right now, which is really good. And he's up against Leandri, a player I haven't heard about before, but he is almost rated 1200, which puts him in like the top 5% percentile of players in the world. So even though it's not like it's not like Starflash versus Zinkugar tier, but it's it's still a pretty high level match. You know, these guys aren't like world champions or anything like that, but uh, they're still pretty pretty good at Advanced Wars in their own right. And sometimes you do actually kind of want to delve into the mid-level games to find the really funny ones, because Grandmasters very seldom make mistakes, which means that a lot of their matches often tend to be stally and not very fun, because they both play perfectly, so there's no opening for attacks, you know? But uh, in, in the mid-level matches, you often find the wackiest, most chaotic type of matches because there's just so much stuff going on. People aren't afraid to play a little bit unorthodoxly. Um, this map is called Shadows Chase You Endlessly, and it, it's a map that a lot of people are very sick of. It's been on the map uh, league ladder uh, map pool forever. Uh, people don't like it very much. I mean, it's not that they don't like it. I mean, this is one of the highest rated maps of all time. I think that's why they've kept it for so long. I think people just want some variety because, you know, you when you play your 50th match on Shadows Chase You Endlessly, it can get a little repetitive. But I still love this map. I think it's a fun map. I enjoy playing on it. I haven't completely burned myself out on it yet because I don't I mean, I, I do queue for standard, but I don't get I don't, I don't get this map as often as, my, as some of my friends do, who seem to get it like every other match. But it's an interesting map. Um, has these, it has these two black bolts right here, which you can use to be a little annoying and harass your opponent. You have these airports, and the, which can often fall victim to the other player if you don't guard them properly. And maybe one of the most controversial aspects of Shadows Chase You Endlessly is that this is one of the few Global League maps where stealth fighters are actually allowed. Uh, and this can really catch you off guard if you don't know about this, because of course, a very common strategy on this map is you rush both airports, or at the very least, you take one airport and you lock the other one down so that your opponent can't build anything from it. You put an anti air, for example, and then you can build stealth fighters and you can just slowly win due to the fact that your opponent can't target them. So, uh, I, and I think a lot of people have lost on this map to stealth fighters, and it's not a fun way to lose, but as long as you're just aware of it, just don't let your opponent take their airport and zone your airport out. If they're building an early anti-air before any air units have come onto the field, you can pretty much know that that's what they're attempting to do. So if you see them being very aggressive on the islands, just be aware that they're probably gonna try some kind of stealth fighter cheese. You can also tell, tell it based on how much money they're saving up. But stealth fighters, they cost 25,000, they're very expensive, so often you might have have to build up some money by just building infantry so it's a very easy cheese to spot if you know it's coming it's very easy to counter but if you don't think if you turn your brain off and play which i do sometimes it can be a little bit annoying so uh, we have a very classical matchup today not a mirror matchup for once um we have uh the kings of tier four adder versus drake um in case you don't know Jake and adder are pretty much considered the top tier picks on um uh, in the in the tier four gang um, depending a little bit on the map, obviously. I tend to favor Adder a little bit more than Jake. I just like his normal power better. But uh, Jake is seen as the strongest tier 4 CO on, 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 like, on average. And Adder is like a close second, especially on maps with mechs and battlecopters, which this map can have. So uh, it's, a, it's a classic matchup, one we see a lot, but I still think it's a fun one. However, I actually think Jess is a really solid CO on this on this particular map because it's not fog, but it's a two-base map. So Jess shines on two-base maps and... 
the black boats, which normally run out of fuel and sink at some point, because you don't really want to bother building an APC to refuel them, you can use Jess's normal power to resupply them and keep them alive for longer. And if you happen to build stealth fighters, you don't need to invest 5k into an APC to keep it refueled. And you'll also be having the black boat, so you can refuel the stealth fighter that way. So um, I, I think Jess is a really solid pick on this map, actually, but I, I realize that not everyone thinks like me. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I say we just get into the match. So, um, yeah, Shadows chase you endlessly. There are... I, I'd say everyone pretty much opens up similarly. They they start by sending their black boats out. I have seen some people keep the black boat on the harbor to deny it so that the opponent doesn't get to take it. You deny 1k from your opponent, essentially. It is a way to use the black boat, but you can zone it out with artillery. But the way pretty much everyone opens uh, Shadows Chase You Endlessly these days is to move the boat like this and try to delay the infantry by a turn so that it takes a little bit longer to get to the airport. You can see both players using their black boats to do exactly that. I think their openers are exactly identical, actually. So, uh, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a solid opener. I mean, this map, again, it has been around for so long that people have pretty much theorycrafted this map to death, and they, they pretty much know. I mean, any any player, like, above 1,200 is going to know the most optimal opener on this map. They're, that's why most of the games tend to be kind of samey, because, again, everyone just does the same. But <laughs> I told you this map was weird. Leandri opening up APC. My goodness. That's risky. That's risky. And this is something we see in like 800 level games, but not in like 1200 games. So opening up APC in standard is pretty much the biggest flex you can do on your opponent because it pretty much signals that, yeah, I'm not afraid of you. Whatever you want to send at me, I'll, I'll, I'll be able to deal with it. I mean, an APC 5k, that's almost a tank. You're going to be a tank behind your opponent. Um, that means your play has to be impeccable if they push early on with tanks. So, uh, you need to know how to respond to that, because you'll be a tank... I mean, you can use the APC to shield, but it's not particularly useful in combat, so... Yeah. Opening APC, pretty big ball move. Uh, so already Floofy is actually sending his black boat back here. He, he sees that this infantry is going to grab these two properties right here. So what Floofy is probably going to do now is going to put his black boat back on the harbor and deny it, forcing Leander to build an artillery if he wants that property. And he does want that eventually because, you know, it's 1k income. It does add up over the course of a match if you don't get it. So already Leander here is rushing the airport. So it should be pretty apparent to Floofy what Leander is gunning for right here. Uh, so let's see if Floofy decides to respond to that properly. So... Uh, yeah, both players just continuing to cap their properties. Uh, Floofy's now getting that harbor, so it's too late for Leandre to deny that right now. But Leandre is not interested in that. He is interested in denying the airport for as long as possible. So if Floofy now moves his infantry like this, then Leandre will just move the black boat like this. And then Floofy has to spend an additional turn moving around this in like a Tetris block formation. And then another turn to get over here. And then another turn to get over here. So let's count the turns. One two, three, four turns. I mean, he could also just move in this infantry, obviously, if he doesn't want to try and capture us, so he could move like this, move the infantry over here, and then he'd get one, two, three. So three turns, and then four turns to cap, and then five turns to move off the property and build something. So five turns from now, Floofy can have a can have something coming out of this airport right now. Leandre will capture this airport in one, two, yeah. Three turn, in three, three turns from now, he'll be able to get something out of it. So I think you can all pretty much surmise what Leandre is going for in this matchup. It should be pretty apparent to Floofy. And yeah, Floofy is, is doing exactly what I what I said I, he probably would do. Um, and yeah, Leandre is once again just blocking the, the airport for one turn, which is pretty smart. Using the APC to boost, pretty cute. Just going for that property, trying to get as many, as much cash as he can, because we all know what kind of unit he's going to build. A recon! <laughs> So very untraditional right here, going recon, and this is smart, because what can, like, look at this recon, look at the path that it has over to the airport. You have the road, you have shoal, city, shoal, one tile of grass, one property, so two tiles of grass, the rest is one move terrain. So the recon can get all the way over to this city on the first turn, and then it can move like this and interrupt the airport on turn two. So the recon is actually a very solid move by Leandre right here. So, uh, normally, recons in standard, I mean, uh, the good, the top-level players do praise the recons a lot. D just talks frequently about how he thinks people should build more recons in standard, because they just, they have, a, they have, 
openers, they, they allow for openers that most people don't expect. And this is a very good example of where a recon shines, where a tank would not. Because I think if we, we count the tiles that a tank can move, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, yeah. The tank cannot reach the airport in two turns, the recon can. And I think this map is actually designed around that, looking at the layout of it. So, yeah, Luffy continues to cap uh, buildings right here. Is he going to build an Antire, though? Let's try and find out. No! Oh my goodness, he's building a tank and an artillery when Leandri is already capping the airport. This is scary. Floofy either has the biggest balls in the world or he's turning his brain off during this match. Could be a combination, maybe? So, Leandri going for more properties. In terms of capture, they're pretty similar, but uh, look at that. That APC is... Man, it's it's making it's, it's being very useful right here. I mean, I I really don't understand why Fluffy didn't go for the tank on this. I mean, maybe he wants to counter the recon, but building the I mean, this artillery is not going to be able to pressure anything, and it certainly can't do anything about the airport. So, this is uh, Fluffy is taking a big risk right here. So in comes the tank. Obviously, the goal of the tank is to prevent the uh, the the airport from being interrupted, but it's not going to be able to do that uh, because look. The Recon can attack from here and here. So, actually, no, he can bring his other infantry over and then... No, he can't, actually. So this, this Recon will be able to interrupt this airport by another turn. And I think that's why Leandre built it. So, yeah, that's uh, it's looking pretty scary for, for Fluffy right now. Because we all know what's coming. And uh, look at look at Leandre's uh, bank. He saved up 12k from the last turn. And now he has an income of 14k. So that means he'll be able to build stealth fighters without base skipping, which is very smart. He has another infantry. Um, is, is, sorry, it's another recon and a tank on the way. Man, where is he getting all this money from? Holy shit. Feels like he just has more money than Fluffy, even though they're similar in the capture game. Finally, Fluffy realizes what's coming his way, and he builds the Antire, I think, one turn too late. Because uh, he's not going to be able to reach the airport in time. If he had that if he had that Antire ready on the last turn, it could have been... Um, he could have had it, like, here. One, two... Eh, it might not have been fast enough, actually. So, uh, now Leander decides to put on a little bit of pressure in the center. And, as predicted, here comes the recon. Interrupts that airport by one turn, <laughs> supplies it with a black boat. That's cute. So, and yeah, he just continues to cap properties. Forgoes the comb tower, and there... Or, there we go. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. Everyone's favorite unit, the Stealth Fighter. And what is Floofy going to do against this? The Antire can hit it when it's stealth. The only thing that can counter the Stealth Fighter is a fighter. And you only get a fighter from this airport. And Leandre is denying the airport. So, uh... This is already very, very scary. The Antire... The only thing the Antire can do is attempt to hit units that come out of the airport. It can strike the Stealth Fighter on the first turn it comes out. Uh, after that, it's practically useless. It can only protect against battlecopters and whatnot. And, ooh, interesting. This is a mistake, I think. So, Fluffy opts not to join Cap here. He opts not to join Cap. So, and this is a problem, because next turn, Leandri can repair the recon and attack. And interrupt the effort for another turn, which is terrible. Oh, Fluffy. Fluffy, no. You can't let those stealth fighters ruin your day, man. So, solid artillery play in the center here. This is going to be nigh on impossible, I think, for Leandre to break through. He can't kill two infantry in a row. And that artillery is, is doing pretty well. This is a good position for any tank. So, yeah. Wow. Okay. Fluffy's just going all out tanks now. I guess he thinks that he should just win the game before the stealth fighter becomes annoying enough. Now, here's the thing. Getting a stealth fighter out doesn't mean you automatically win, okay? Um, it, it's still, like, it doesn't do a lot of damage, it's annoying, but if you're greatly ahead, you can still win a game, even with a Stealth Fighter on the match. There we go. Goes Transparent, so, uh, now, uh, the Stealth Fighter is hidden, and yeah, this is exactly what I was worried about. It didn't repair, though. Yo, no, he did. No, did he repair? Did he repair? Yeah, he did. He did repair. There we go. Yeah, so he repaired it. Interrupts the airport for another turn! Oh, no. Stealth Fighter is gonna have a field day here. Interesting decision, though, that he moved it over here and not, like, into the center. I would have maybe moved my Stealth Fighter all the way into the center. Maybe he wants to interrupt some caps. In comes the APC. Oh, f wait. Floofy moved his boat away? Why? Wait, when did this happen? Give me a second. I need to... 
Why'd you move your- Oh, he moved his boat away because of the stealth fighter. Right. You know what? I would have kept it there. You know why? Because why would you waste, like, three turns with the stealth fighter to kill a black boat and then, like, spend two more turns? Like, that's, like, five turns that you can spend to get a fighter out. Keep this boat here. If, if your opponent sends his stealth fighter all the way back here to kill a single black boat, then that's a win. That's, like... Four or five turns that you just earned yourself. That's plenty of time to get out of a, a fighter. So I would have just kept the kept the black boat there. No, no sense in moving it away. I st this play confuses me though. I don't really understand why he moves over here. I mean, like, there's no fighter in sight for like another three turns. Just move in here and like go to town on this artillery or something. Like you have free reign with your with your stealth fighter here. Just use it while you can. So yeah, Leandro is pulling back though. And now he's getting the harbor. He actually forgoes his city capture. That's kind of cute. So yeah, Fluffy is in a world of hurt right now. And oh my goodness, is he going to get... No, Fluffy! He's he's not going to get the airport. No. Okay, now he's going for it. He's like, shit, I can't, I can't get this airport. I'm just going to go all in. Eh, it's not bad. It's not, it's not terrible. You know, just put... Oh my god, and here comes the meat. Yeah, he's going for it. He's going all in now. Sending his black boat over here. Day 10 rolls in. And yeah, beautiful. You see that APC that he built early on? He can use that to resupply the stealth fighter right now. They burn 10 fuel per turn. And that's just from standing still. It's 10 fuel plus whatever they move. So they run out of fuel very fast. You need it. What? Leandre sending his stealth fighter to attack? Okay. I guess, but doesn't he see that he can interrupt the... Oh, okay. All right. Floofy, sadly, his wall... Oof. His wall gets broken true. And, oh, this is devastating. This is so devastating. <laughs> he uses the black boat to, to trap the tanks and prevent further reinforcements. So, uh, yeah, this is... Uh, this is uh, this is going to be bad for Floofy if he can't do anything about it. But, I mean, he gets a free tank out of it, so there's that at least. Oh, free and free. He lost his airports. I don't know if you can call it free, but, yeah, Floofy's just pushing in here. He's like, okay, I'm just going to go for your HQ. If you're just going to... Keep in mind, Floofy doesn't... Actually, he knows that the Stealth Fighter is here because it attacked his fight infantry, so he's like, okay. All right. <laughs> sure. I'll just go all in. And that's exactly what he's doing. Bringing in the Black Boat. It is running out of fuel, though. It's going to run out of fuel very soon. Leandri is content to just kill infantry with the Stealth Fighter. That's uh, interesting. I mean, there's no fighter coming out here, so just send that bad boy up north. Weird place right here from Leandri. It really It's weird. And in comes the side slip. This is the advantage that Adder has over uh, Jake in the early game, is that he gets his power before Jake's gets his. So he can uh, do a pretty good counter push right here. And a Neo Tank comes out. Oof. That's gonna hurt. That's gonna hurt a lot. But look at Floofy's money 37,000. How the hell did he bank up that much cash? He pretty much has the island to himself right now. He forgoes the Cap Tower, uh, Com Tower. He knows he has to get that airport. So what is he gonna do? Is he gonna keep on the attack? Oh yes, he just keeps going for it. Oh, he brings his tanks down now too. This is actually kind of scary for Leandre right here. <laughs> and out comes the Mega Tank. Me Day 11 standard Mega Tank. How often do you see that? The Mega Tank is of course a very good response to the Neo Tank. It's a very good response, because what can the Neo Tank do against the Mega Tank? Obviously, it's going to get a free medium tank now, so that's not great. And yeah, the Stealth Fighter just continues to gobble up infantry down in the south there. I'm guessing his rationale for keeping the Stealth Fighter down here is because there will be a fighter coming out soon, so maybe he'll just stay in the south. Could be the case. So, Leandre opts to not take that shot. I probably would have taken that shot, honestly. I think I would have taken... I, I would have gone for the medium tank, honestly. Um, he puts his Neo Tank on the HQ where it will sit very comfortably until the Mega Tank arrives. So yeah, this attack from Fluffy, it's uh, not going great. In comes the Batacopter too, that's uh, that's kind of scary, but Fluffy does have his Block Rock ready. Is he going to pop it though? Let's see what happens. No Block Rock, nope, never, there, there we go, Block Rock. Very scary superpower, two bo bonus movement to all vehicles. Look at those tanks, ah, he can base lock him, he can base lock him. Almost. Well, yeah, now there we go. I mean, the Neo Tank can get pulled back, but now the Neo Tank has to be pulled back. At least if Luffy can get this uh, Battlecopter. This is a very scary attack, actually. Look how fast that Mega Tank is with Block Rock. It's kind of nice. 
Boom. Bottlecopter goes down. It's too bad. Oh, no, actually, he does. Mm. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, this is this is this is a brilliant attack by Fluffy because right now, actually, no, Leandro can pop side slip and he can reach. If Leandro didn't have his side slip ready, then he would have been forced to use the Neo tank to break out this base, which would have been a big win for Fluffy. So this is a, this is a pretty good attack, honestly. But is it going? To, oh, and there comes the Neo tank. Yeah, Fluffy is all in. Really, because Leandro is not pressuring Fluffy that much with this. Oh my God, what is go why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> okay. Sides. So <laughs> such a weird place. I don't know what's going on. Why wouldn't you move your stealth fighter up? There's no fighter. I mean, he does have his airport now, I guess. So that's that's the case. All right. So slides. Yeah. And this is the side slip allows him to free his base, which is really smart. And ooh, wow. He just places his neo tank in range of the medium tank or the mega tank, and he builds the mega tank of his own. <laughs> he builds a mega tank of his own. Uh, so that oh my god, I told you this map was this match was gonna be pure chaos. Floofy finally gets a what? A, a bomber? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? I guess he doesn't care about the stall fighter anymore. So okay, he gets the ooh yeah mega tank apparently does not one shot Neo Sun City with uh, with when when they have a power ooh okay. So, uh, this Mega Tank, even with Side Slip, is not going to be able to reach. So, Fluffy is keeping on the pressure here. He is keeping on the pressure. So, he's just going to keep gunning for that HQ. Let's see how it actually ends up doing, shall we? So, uh, yeah, now, now Leander is going to start. I think this is what he wanted to do all along. He wanted to grab properties down in the south to try and... Choke uh, Floofy out economically. Gets a resupply. That's good. Yeah, Mega Tank on HQ. Oof, you're not going to dislodge that. Maybe with Jake Blockrock from a Plains, you could do it. Because that's like, what, 60% with... Uh, I think it's 70% with Common Tower. So, it'd be a tough matchup for sure. Because the Mega Tank's going to get repaired next turn. But it can be done, maybe. Mega Tank plus Neo Tank might be able to dislodge it with Superpower. But yeah, uh, Leander is doing a good job defending here. Luffy definitely has to put put on the pressure, and yeah, he has to build the Empire because of the incoming bomber. Okay, takes out the black boat. That's a good pickup. Yeah, that black boat is pretty annoying. Just get rid of it. So let's see what happens. Luffy has to pull his uh, mega back because that mega on the on the on the HQ is just too annoying at this point. And yeah, now Luffy's gonna lose a lot of cities in the south here. So this is bad. And now the Stealth Fighter is finally brave enough. Yeah. Floofy did build a fighter, thank god. But uh, now Floofy's HQ is being pressured relentlessly, so this is this is looking pretty bad. Yeah, now Leandro is feeling confident. Oh my god, is he overextending? Oh my goodness. Oh, this is bad. I don't think... Oh, okay, he does put up a pretty good wall here, but... Like, Floofy can get a planes-boosted bomber, and then if he clears out these two guys right here, he can get a planes-boosted mega tank with a power. That might be enough to kill the Mega. I'd be very careful if I was him. Another Untire comes out. Yeah, he knows he has to be careful about that Bomber. Day 15 rolls in. Luffy's gonna pick up some properties now, which is good. And finally, that Fighter comes into uh, comes into range. The benefit, of course, of having a Stealth Stealth Fighter is that your opponent has to kind of guess where it is. So, uh, it's hard to just track it down with one. It's not like the Fighter hard counters the Stealth. It only hard counters it if it manages to get into its vicinity. But now, Floofy actually finds himself having to go on the defensive here. So this is pretty scary. And the Antire comes in to, uh, to alleviate the attack here. And the Stealth Fighter just goes down to gobble up infantry again. He's just like, yeah, okay, I'm out. <laughs> he really doesn't want to lose that Stealth Fighter. So... But, yep, no, he pulls back. Moves a fight. Yeah, so now he has a fighter of his own to counter Floofy's fighter. So this could be pretty scary if Luffy doesn't do anything. And now his HQ is actually under attack, and it even has an enemy tank occupying it. So this is looking pretty scary for Floofy here. He's got to have to... Yeah, he takes out a Batacopter. That's decent. Sends a tank up to counter the Antire. Neo tank takes up... Gobbles up a free tank, which is good. Ooh, he's really... He's really scared of losing that bomber. Builds an artillery? Okay, uh, artillery Antire. It's not going to do anything to the Stealth Fighter, though. Now... 
Something that needs to be said, in on Advanced Wars by Web, if the Stealth Fighter attacks the Empire, it will be retaliated on. This is this is different from Advo from Dual Strike, where it doesn't. Uh, this is a mechanic they added in. So if you are stupid enough to actually attack the Empire itself, you will take heavy damage. So don't do that. I did that once. I wasn't paying attention, and I lost my Stealth Fighter, and it was not fun. But yeah, my goodness, Lander being so scared for the Stealth Fighter here. I do get it, Floofy has a fighter of its own, but it's far away. You can just put it on the edge of the range. But yeah, looks like Leandre, he has such an income lead right now. 30k to 21k for Floofy. See, so he's just cho- Oh, second Stealth Fighter! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> now there are two of them! This is getting out of hand. So, yeah, this is, uh, this is looking- Oh, no, I don't think a Neotank on an HQ can deal with the Mega Tank Floofy. I don't think that's gonna work. I think the Mega Tank will just obliterate it. I think that's exactly what's gonna happen. Leandro even has to sideslip. He could pop it! Yeah, no- Oh, he pops super! The rarely seen, rare, adder super- Oh! Devastating! It takes- Oh, Floofy cannot afford to lose fighters right now. This is devastating. Oh, and in comes the- oh, <laughs> Look at that! Stealth fighter against fighter. 7-4 with power. And yeah, this is what I was talking about. That HQ ain't gonna protect you, man. That is- Oh my god, even goes for the HQ cap with the Sidewinder. You know, Sidewinder isn't always pop, but it's very entertaining when it does get pop because it allows Adder to do whack shit like this. My goodness, this is a pretty devastating attack. Holy shit, suddenly Floofy's on the defensive. He was on the offense, like, all match. But he pops Block Rock. Is it going to be enough, though? It's a strong power. He takes out a Recon. Almost kills the fighter. Kills the- Ah, oh, doesn't roll high enough. He gets a one-shot on the bat. In the end, ladies and gentlemen. He resigns. So... Weird ass match, I must say. Um, chaotic as hell. I understand why, why Star Flash sent it to me. I will say both players did make a lot of mistakes in this match. Maybe it's just I don't know. Like I, I feel like this this was such a weird game, you know? Uh Floofy not denying the airport. Uh Leandri's in like like reluctance to put his stealth fighter into the center, just keeping it back out of fear of losing it. Um and then Floofy, of course, like uh, building a mega tank to attack, that's unique. I've never seen that before. So a wild match. I told you it wasn't going to be like a like a super like high level match or anything, but it was it was pretty entertaining. And if I want you to take one lesson away from this, it's just when you play Shadows Chase You Endlessly, if you see your opponent rushing the airport, there's only one kind of cheese they're gunning for, and it's the stealth fighters. So just make sure you you build an anti early on and be prepared for it, because no one wants to lose to stealth fighters. That's just that just sucks, man. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you guys enjoyed this chaotic match. I will uh, see you guys next time. Like, comment, subscribe, and all that good stuff. Bye-bye!